The concept map is a system to help kids learn more deeply because deep learning sticks with you for the rest of your life. Now, there are actually two kinds of depth and let's use an analogy of trees in a forest. Uh, so the trunk and the branches are the core ideas of your topic and the leaves are the facts and concepts that you that you need. Those are all in the curriculum, but they're parts that are underneath that you can't see, the roots. And that's what anchor and feed the tree. That's your prior knowledge. Uh, so let's see how that, that can work. Uh, if someone has broad prior knowledge, uh, just as the, the tree on the left has roots that connect to other trees, um, that leads to a generalist. You can, you can take what you know and apply it to other areas, and it's highly creative. Uh, botanists have actually figured out that uh, trees can communicate uh, as their, their roots are close through uh, chemical and biological communications. Uh, roots that go deeply and don't connect to many other uh, trees uh, are sort of like a specialist's knowledge. They know more and more and more, but, but not about a broad area. So the concept map was designed to make these kinds of brain connections, like the broad roots. And um, cognitive scientist David Ossipal says uh, the most important factor in student learning is what the student already knows that they can connect to, right? If they don't know much, they can't connect things to things they don't know. So let's look at the blue circle in the top brain here. And that circles a, a part, some part of prior knowledge. Let's say that child has taken vacations on the beach and has seen the tide come in and go out, go in and come out. And each of the red dots are little facts that the child knows and the purple lines are the connections between them. Of course, there are billions of them, um, but this is just a, a sort of a cartoon. Now imagine that the curriculum, like in, in astronomy class, the child learns that, oh, it's the gravitational pull of the moon that causes the oceans to shift, uh, creating tides. Well, uh, if that child also knows that, gee, uh, the moon has planes that are called mares, and that's the Italian word for ocean. Oh, okay. So um, ocean and Mars, ocean on the earth, there's a, there's a connection. And uh, with, with each connection that that child can make, that's another pathway that their brain can use to retrieve that information when they need to remember it or to encode it in a very powerful way. Uh, the concept map was developed in the 1970s specifically to represent how kids connect new knowledge to their existing knowledge. And it's been used with kids from six years to adults. Uh, it, it really works. Uh, later in the 1970s, Tony Buzan, through his BBC shows, popularized the idea. He called it a mind map because uh, he thought that that's how the mind really connects information, not linearly like in uh, an outline, but uh, more like a web of knowledge. So he called this radiant thinking and, and he saw it as a personalized way of learning where each child would draw the the ideas and, and link new ideas in ways that made sense to them and if there was a an item that they knew in their own life they'd link it to that too even though the rest of the class didn't know that uh, he says this was inspired by the way that leonardo da vinci and albert einstein thought and he he followed with uh, followed up on novak's concept maps he added the color coding of concepts and adding graphics uh, with the idea that that adds multiple channels, multiple pathways for the learning to take place. So let's look at uh, a really old, maybe the very first sort of concept map uh, called the Porphyrian Tree. This is a 14th century graphic that depicts through sort of a tree um, the uh, categories of Aristotle's view of how living things are kind of related to each other. So uh, animals and plants, and then with plants there'd be trees and shrubs and flowers. Um, plants, you know, uh, mammals, birds, fish, and so on. Uh, but this tree connects them in a logical way. Uh, and actually this tree in the in Aristotle's system was used to teach logic for centuries. 
uh, in early universities and, and uh, to teach priests. Here's a modern concept map created by NASA, the U.S. government's space agency. This was drawn or done to uh, plan one of NASA's most successful space missions, the mission to Mars to deliver the first two Mars rovers, Spirit and Opportunity. So uh, you can see circled at the top is the topic. Well, the, pro the, the purpose of this mission is exploring Mars. And this is founded on the NASA Mars Science Goals, uh, which include, obviously, uh, the history of geology and climate on Mars, but also the search for evidence of former life on Mars. And uh, that search for life follows from our understanding of how life on Earth has left traces behind that we could find. Uh, astrobiology, how life may exist elsewhere in the universe, and where to search on Mars for evidence of life. And uh, where to search, well, what are the possible landing sites that would take the rovers close to where they could find evidence of life? And uh, the, the concerns, the issues, might a landing site be too steep and, and the landing module would fall over or let, maybe it would land on boulders and, and it would all break up. What you're seeing on this page is actually called the Mars 2001 Map of Maps. It connects to over 100 concept sub-maps. And uh, if you'd like to explore this yourself, you'll see how, how I do it in the next slide, but uh, just Google CMAP Mars. And one of the first listings that will come up is Exploring Mars Map of Maps. Select that, and this is what you'll see, and you'll be able to actively explore the all 100 concept maps to see how NASA cre uh, uh, develops a, um, a mission plan. Well, how do you get from this concept map to the others? Notice that uh, here in uh, the Research Utilization node, there's a little, a little icon, a little badge. There's one under each one. And if you click on that, uh, a menu drops down of the links that you can get to. So if we click on the first one, Atmosphere, that takes us to the Martian Atmosphere concept map. And that gives us links to all we need to know about the Martian atmosphere for this mission, including that volcanic ash and, and gases come up from Mars' volcanoes. If we wanted to explore the, the Mars volcanoes, we could click on that link and see volcanism on Mars. Uh, this kind of concept map called CMAP Tools can also link to, uh, to images such as this map of uh, uh, this image of Olympus Mons, largest volcano on Mars, uh, more than twice as tall as the highest mountain on Earth, massive thing. Uh, now, that's a professional organization system. Uh, yours wouldn't be that complicated. This is a, a concept map that one of my classes did. I created the first page. Notice the, the rich graphics that you can include. And uh, that's an, a photo of our, of our textbook. It's explained, meaningful learning is explained in, in chapter one. And uh, if we click on that little link, we go to chapter one's concept map, which was created by a team of students. And then another team of students created a concept map for chapter two, chapter three, et cetera. And that was all shared with the rest of the class. Uh, decades ago, students would have created outlines, which are linear and, and don't show the proper web of connections. So the, the benefit of concept maps is having the kids do the concept map, not the teacher for, for, you know, to, to show them. Uh, so the big ideas are that concept maps were actually designed to promote personalized deep learning. And the strategy is to make personal connections among the topics that are being studied. The benefits are deep learning uh, is a kind of learning that can be remembered and applied in class and throughout life. And the technology can be concept mapping software like CMAP tools. There's a link at the bottom of the page in the speech bubble or it can be done just on paper and pencil with colored markers like Tony Buzan. So give concept maps a try. It's a great system.